All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of live SEO support where you can ask us, or I guess just me today, any kind of SEO questions and uh, yeah, we'll get you some answers, see if we can help you out a bit. Um, yeah, it's just me again today. Nick actually um, just got on a flight or is just about to get on a flight, I believe. Uh, he's going to be slowly making his way out in my direction. Um, I'm in Malaysia right now, but we'll be meeting up in Vietnam pretty soon uh, for the conference out there, SEO Mastery Summit uh, with Mr. Mad Singers. Um, so yeah, if any of you guys are going to be out in Vietnam for the SEO Mastery Summit, definitely, uh, if you see us, say hello. We'd love to meet everyone. Um, yeah, it's just always awesome meeting people uh, from online. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to be going this year again. Um, What's up? You got my money. Um, I'll get to you in just a second, man. Um, but yeah, if you guys got any SEO questions at all, like always, just go ahead and drop them in the chat and we'll get to it as soon as possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the stream uh, with a um, with a question we, we had previously. It's not, not really a, a site audit, but um, kind of like a site audit where I'm going I'm to look at someone's uh, page. Uh, please advise what is it exactly that would be better to add there on the homepage. Maybe I need to add an article there, maybe just a few more tips. Let me know. And let me get you guys something to look at while I'm uh, analyzing his homepage because, um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you it. Okay. So this is what his site is looking like right now, as far as what Ahrefs is showing. Let me get this off the screen for you guys. So yeah, you can see here, it's actually like a super fresh site. It's only got one referring domain, um, you know, 10 traffic. You know, he was up to 160 traffic and then down to zero, but honestly, I wouldn't even really worry about that so much. It's like so little traffic at this point. It really looks like it's like one keyword. You can see those like straight up and down lines looks kind of like just one keyword, like it's popping on the page one or something and then it, you know, pops down a few positions and even more. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't even look at that. The traffic at this point just got so little going on. And um, I guess full disclosure, this guy is enrolled in our managed link building service. I think he just started with us, meaning we'll be uh, building backlinks for him. Of course, they're not showing up here quite yet. I don't know if we've actually completed any for him yet, but um, yeah, so we'll be taking care of link building and he'll be taking care of all his content and stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and I'm going to take a quick look at his homepage and try to give him some tips. What was this question again? Uh, what can I add to the homepage? Should I add an article on the homepage? Maybe a few tips. All right. So to answer the one part, should you add an article? My answer for that is no, I wouldn't, would not add an article. It's just not normal for any kind of homepage to have an article on it. Uh, normally the homepage for any kind of site, you're talking about your brand. I know some like affiliate sites and stuff used to, um, try to put like an article on their homepage, especially if they're like an EMD, like, uh, like bestheadphones.com, and they would just have their, their best headphones article on their homepage. But I think that's like extremely spammy. Um, I'm not saying it can't work, uh, but I think, um, I think it works a lot less now than it used to. So anyway, I'd be pretty wary of putting any kind of like art, like full article on your homepage like that. Um, so yeah, let's see what he's got going on here. Oh, kind of a crazy niche. I've never seen a this this niche before. Super interesting. Um, and to be quite honest, I mean your homepage looks pretty good to me. Um, I mean it's you know the homepage is generally where you just you tell people about what you do, right? Um, you you talk about your brand, you know why we do what we do, and you can link to your other pages. Um, See a lot of pictures and some text and stuff. Okay, you you do have a little call to action down here where they can like book a, a 30 minute call or, or chat or something. Um, got a little form they can fill out below. I would like to see more stuff on the on the home page. Um, like that's directing them to other pages on the website. So for example, uh, I guess I can just use our website as an example. Um, yeah, if you go over here, let me make sure it's showing right. If you go to our, our website, our homepage, you know, so right at the top, we're driving people either 
you know, right at the top, it's either, you know, you can look at our case study so you can see that we know what we're talking about, or you can click here and go straight to our services page right at the top. And here, um, you know, we've got some, you know, customer testimonial and briefly explaining exactly what we do. And I've got a link here going to, you know, learn more about us or, you know, about our team or whatever. Other things we do, you know, so here's a link to our blog. A uh, link to our live stream, a link to um, just some other stuff where people can interact with us. Uh, you know, links to individual case studies. Um, so you know, really, we're using the homepage as like a hub, right? Um, to to link out to a bunch of stuff. You even got like a fact down here, uh, recent blog post, more customer testimonials, another call to action down here at the bottom. Um, so you can really use your homepage to really try to drive traffic. But but mainly what you're going to be doing is just talking about your brand and giving like the, the main overview of the entire site. So you can kind of think about your homepage as kind of like a menu for the entire site. I would, really would not try to, well, you do have an EMD, um, but honestly, uh, I, if I were you, you know, I, I can see the keyword you're trying to rank for with your, with your EMD. Um, I, I'd probably look into trying to rank an article um, instead rather than that that specific uh, page. So yeah, just use it as a hub page. Don't do an article and uh, use it to, to link out to a bunch of stuff where you want to drive traffic and just talk about your brand, what you do, and you know, link elsewhere. Hopefully that helps. Let's get this off the screen. All right, let's see what we got next. Popping over here to YouTube. And like always, guys, like, comment, subscribe helps us out a lot. And if you've got any questions at all, drop it in the chat. Uh, you guys got any tips on advanced schema for mass page local sites with uh, like 100 to 150 location pages using Generator Pro? I want to do more advanced schema on those pages. Any recommendation for tools? Uh, no. So, so actually, uh, me and Nick are not big schema people at all. Um, I actually think there's also like completely diminishing returns on schema. So like, I'm, I'm not saying that schema is completely useless, uh, but what I'm saying is we don't use it at all. Um, take that for what you will. We rank fine without it. And what I was going to say about diminishing returns is, you know, a lot of the stuff that you're feeding into schema that you're fe basically feeding information to Google as Google gets smarter, more efficient, better at digesting information their schema is going to become less and less necessary. And I, I would argue it's not even necessary right now. Um, so yeah, not really an answer to your question, but I'm not going to try to pretend like I know the answer to it when it's something I'm, I don't know anything about at all. Um, but I, what I would say is um, I wouldn't spend too much time on trying to get super advanced with schema. If you want to use it, that's fine. I know a lot of people do use it. I mean, we should probably use it too and just do the super basic stuff, right? Um, but yeah, I would just stop at what's basic and just go spend your time on something else. It's not worth spending your time on this. Uh, go spend it on either creating good backlinks or creating better content or, I don't know, being active on social media or YouTube or something. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like one of these things I think is just a, a big uh, time suck and it's just not super necessary and it's going to be less necessary as time goes forward. Let's see what else we got here. And yeah, I know the stream is a kind of a random time. We haven't been announcing when they're going to be or anything. So yeah, I'm not sure how many people are going to be showing up and asking questions. So we'll see what happens. Uh, would you just jump in and get back to content production or would you use the analytics to improve current pages? Oh, okay. So this was someone who was asking about, um, yeah, they basically had a bunch of questions and they were asking about like if they should improve their old content or their, their new content or whatever. Um, so yeah, so that I feel like this answer is a little bit tricky, right? So it depends like how much content you already have on the site. If you have like a decent amount of content on the site already and they haven't been updated in a while, then it could be, I feel like you have better uh, results by updating your old content. Google already knows it's there. It's already probably ranking somewhere. Um, it maybe even has some backlinks already going to it versus if you were to start writing new content you know google doesn't know anything about this article yet it doesn't have any links going to it hasn't established any kind of trust or user signals with google yet so a lot of the time you can actually uh do pretty well just by like improving and uh and adding to and updating your old content 
Um, but what you want to be careful of is, is you don't want to just like start going and trying to tweak content. So like basically, let's say you have something ranking up position uh, five and it's like I go in there uh, one week and then um, I tweak all the keywords and I'm messing with the title and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, oh, and then maybe one month later I do it again. And then one month later I do it again. Like that's not how it works. Um, you know, at that point, like there's a limit to the amount of content tweaking that you can do where yeah, it's not going to pay off anymore. Like there's, there's other factors to the equation. And if someone's beating you on authority and you don't have any authority, you don't have any links going to your page or your website's really weak overall, your domain authority, then it doesn't matter how much you tweak the content and you're not going to get results from it. So, um, you know, what I would say is if you have a decent amount of content on the site already, and it has not been updated in a while, I would do that first before adding old content or before adding new content, sorry. And then you can start adding new content. Um, and what I mean by old is maybe it hasn't been updated in like uh, three to six months, something like that. And I believe they asked some more questions and so I don't want to get too much into this one now, but we'll, I guess we'll see. But um, you could also look for stuff where the rankings have gone down. So for example, uh, let's say, uh, you know, Ahrefs was showing the traffic like up here and then uh, over the course of like one year or something, it was never updated and it just like kind of went like that. The traffic died down. That's a huge like rewrite or like, you know, improve article candidate. Um, you know, that's, that, that's the stuff that I would want first because like Google was rewarding it and then they kind of took it away. So I'll look at those first and then the other ones which just haven't been updated in a long time. Maybe the traffic is going sideways. You could update those and then new content after that. Hopefully that helps. Let's see what we got next. Uh, Stefan, let's see what Stefan over here says. Not sure if I understand your question, Stefan. Can you walk me through how you guys handle whitelisting links, scheduling links, price breakpoints, or such, or where should I contact you? I'm not really sure if I understand your question, but if you have if you have any questions at all about our services, go ahead and send us an email over at info at sirlinksalot.co. Uh, we've got a support staff that's trained to help you on this stuff, and they'll take care of you 100%. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a customer service question. But if, if I've got it wrong, uh, go ahead and you can hit me with another question here, and I'll try to help you out. White labeling, yeah. Uh, all our all our links are white labeling or easily white labeled. We give you a report. You could literally just delete. We have an image in the report of our brand. You could just hit the delete button and save it, and boom. There's there's nothing tying it to our agency at that point anymore. Um, yeah, everything's white label. Um, all right. Let's see what the next question is. Any questions at all, guys? Doesn't matter if you think it's a beginner question or an advanced question or whatever. Go ahead and drop it in the chat. Uh, when you do improve current pages, do you pri prioritize the worst performing pages to see if you can get them up from nothing? Or do you prior prioritize the mid zone pages to see if you can optimize what's already sort of working? Um, OK, so yeah. You, you could do both, but it's going to take a little bit of like analysis, right? So like if, if, if you put a page up and it hasn't done not, like nothing, like three months, six months, and it's just nothing, uh, there's something wrong. And I don't know what that wrong is, but you'll have to analyze that a little bit further. It's probably not an authority problem um, because even if it was lacking authority, you'd, you'd probably be ranking somewhere. Um, it could be like a search intent problem or Google could see it as low quality content or something. But I'd want to figure out why it just wasn't ranking anywhere. Um, but I mean, if it's ranking on like page five or something, or even like page like four or three, it could still just be an authority problem. And so you, you could very quickly using something like Ahrefs toolbar or Mozbar or something, you can just see very quickly how much authority the people on page one have, how many links to the, that those pages have as well page two and then just see if you kind of like fit that pattern and if you do fit the pattern and you're way behind them you know tweaking your content's not going to matter so um but you know if that wasn't the issue and there's people on page one and you're like hey well i have similar authority to them my page has a similar number of backlinks whatever it's, or maybe it's close enough um then you know you, maybe you've got something else completely wrong like search intent or maybe you haven't covered the topic fully or um 
yeah, maybe your content length is like way off or something, even though content length is kind of a weird issue right now with the way Google is kind of moving towards maybe even preferring shorter content. I'm not even really sharing a lot, but something to kind of look at, right? Um, and then, you know, mid zone pages, um, you know, those could be candidates as well. It just depends how they're performing. I guess they're mid zone, so they're not performing too well. If they've like dropped, uh, like I said in the previous question, I, I like trying to go after the stuff that's dropped for sure, because Google already kind of knows it's there and basically it's just maybe outdated or needs a refresh or needs to add a little bit more info or something like that. Um, but yeah, so pages that have dropped is like my number one focus for updating old content. Uh, number two, you definitely want to look at stuff that's like not doing anything at all. And if it's ranking good, if it's ranking well, I don't really like to touch it, honestly. Like, like maybe I'll like update like a couple words or something, like just to keep it kind of like fresh or whatever. But like, I would not be making like any major changes if the content's like doing really well, right? Um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Advice for a cleaning business owner regarding SEO. Um, yeah, so basically there's, you know, there's a couple of different kinds of SEO, but the way you can think about it is there's really like, you can just really think about it as like two kinds. There's local SEO and there's the other stuff that's not local SEO. So local SEO would be somebody like you, you know, you're, you're a business owner in a city and you provide a service locally in that city you know it's just very different from someone like for example my company uh we're an seo agency and a link building agency and we provide our services all over the world right so it's kind of a different game as far as seo goes um and you know for you as a cleaning business owner the strategy the whole strategy for how to rank your website is really the same as any other local seo um company of course there's like small like you know, if you want to, of course, like maybe your messaging, the way you talk to clients is going to be different, or maybe like your link building targets will be a little bit different, something like that, like kind of partnerships you can make or whatever. But in general, it's the same exact strategy, you know, get a Google My Business, uh, get some reviews going, like real reviews going on your Google My Business. Uh, of course, uh, you want to build citations, a bunch of citations. Um, this is kind of like a foundational type of, of link. Um, basically just directories on the internet um, that have your name, address, and phone number for, of your business. Um, they're super cheap. You can make them yourself, but it's a pain in the butt. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, you could you could make them yourself or you could pay someone like us to do it for you. Um, you're going to want to do some like social profiles. You know, it's basically getting all your social media stuff set up for your brand, especially like the big stuff, right? But you could do um, some smaller stuff as well. We provide this as a service too, or you could do it yourself. Um, you could even do like a press release to kind of like get things started with link building, really like press releases, um, just like saying something about your business, you know, uh, we hit our, or the, you know, maybe we're expanding to this area or uh, we're off this company, this, our company is offering this new service or we hit our, you know, revenue goals this year. I don't know. It can really be anything. It doesn't really matter. Just, you'll be getting uh, links from kind of like these little news websites. And I really like this. Um, for all websites, but for local too. Um, and so all of this is kind of like foundational link building, right? And then aside from that, um, you know, as a local business, you're not gonna need to go too heavy, especially for a cleaning company. Uh, you're not gonna need to go too heavy on like the the more expensive kind of like heavier links like guest posts and, and link insertions or niche edits, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, but you wanna do some of those as well. And you can just be super natural with them, you know, link to your homepage with like a branded anchor text, something like that. And then uh, from there, uh, yeah, you could you know build out your build out your website, make sure it's all optimized for on-page SEO. You know, you've got your keywords and the uh, the title tag, the H1, the URL slug. Um, make sure you know you you write some content on your page that's kind of similar like other people on your website. Uh, don't try to do any keyword stuffing or anything crazy. You don't need to go crazy with your keywords. Just kind of be chill out about it. Just get it in those important places that I mentioned. And uh, yeah, you can even have like a little blog on your website if you want to. But I feel like a lot of like local guys, they, they get confused and they try to do blogging like a national or like international brand would like we would, uh, where they are targeting all this like informational stuff, but it really has like no effect on their like bottom line or like driving like conversions, right? So you're a clean, cleaning company and if you wrote an article that was like, uh, how to clean the carpet or something like that. 
and then um yeah, you know, who's going to read this? It's going to be like some, it's going to be people like all over the world, all over the U S going to be reading it. And they're not going to turn in your cup into your, your, um, uh, customer because it's just the chances of it are so tiny and it's just not really the type of, uh, way that people find your kind of business. Right. Uh, but you could produce blog content that's kind of like locally relevant. So, you know, kind of like examples of the work that you did, uh, you know, using like location name, like, Oh, we, you know, we, had this job on this part of town showing like pictures and stuff, stuff like that. But as far as like blog content goes, I, I feel like and I, some, some people might disagree with me on this, but I feel like a lot of local uh, SEO people kind of miss the mark and they're, they're trying to do something that's like way um, out of line with what's expected or what's, what's thought of as normal for a local business. And, um, but when in doubt, what you can do is just go look at your competitors, go look at their websites, what's on their blog, what kind of stuff are they writing? about especially like your top like one two three competitors and that'll give you a good idea uh and yeah um i think i covered all most of the important stuff gmb basic foundational link building with citations uh getting of course getting your nap on your website and stuff as well um you know getting a blog rolling but don't go crazy with a bunch of informational stuff i'll just keep it kind of like local tailored and um yeah i think that's about it Let's see. Any questions, guys? Go ahead and drop them in the chat. Doesn't matter if you think it's a stupid question or not. I've probably been asked it before, so no worries. Uh, is Google releasing any update on the 24th to 25th time interval? I saw a lot of decline in traffic. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at sensor real quick. Quick. This is SEMrush sensor. You do not need a subscription to SEMrush to look at this. You just go to SEMrush.com slash sensor. Um, yeah, so what you can see from or really starting over here on March 6th, which is when um, uh, the spam update and core update started rolling out. Uh, there's been a lot more volatility than normal. Um, I believe the spam update concluded I'm not even sure. I'm pretty sure the spam update concluded about two weeks in, so maybe around March 20th, maybe somewhere around here, the spam update finished. And then what's happening right now, I think, is the core update. But I'm not really like super tuned into this stuff. Um, I just know there was like two things kind of happening together, and I was actually confused about it myself, but there's two separate updates. Um, the spam update, you, you would think it would be link spam, but it appears what they're targeting mainly is like content spam on this one. Uh, but you can check out... Um, Google's uh, Google spam guidelines. Let me pull this up for you real quick. Yeah, if you just Google like Google spam guidelines, you can um, see something like this. Um, and so, yeah, they're targeting stuff like cloaking, uh, doorway pages, expired domain abuse, hacked content, hidden text and links, keyword stuffing link spam but i don't honestly i heard some people talking about link spam but i don't think we, we really haven't seen much of an effect at all but i think they might have taken out some like super obvious like guest post farms like maybe stuff on public lists like fiverr or whatever but all the like legitimate link builders like ourselves i haven't really seen much of an effect at all with link spam uh machine generated traffic's like fake traffic bot traffic malware uh misleading functionality scaled content abuse this is the kind of the biggest one the the most important one that's going on right now or just finished up uh, basically using AI to pump out content. Uh, no, not all AI sites have been hit. Yes, a lot have. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be like AI, I don't think. I think it has more to do with uh, adding unique value, um, which we can talk about some other time on another question if you feel like it. Uh, scraped content, sneaky redirects, site reputation abuse. Site reputation abuse, I believe it's a like parasite SEO. Um, thin affiliate pages, user generated spam, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyway, you can check that out yourself. Uh, but yeah, I think that one actually finished. So if you got hit on the 24th or 25th, it could be the like regular core update. Um, the regular core update, you know, is just kind of like everything, but it also like factors in stuff like eat E E A T as well as, um, helpful content is now rolled into the core system apparently um it, i feel like all this shit is getting really confusing but <laughs> um you have to have like a degree to like keep uh 
keep track of like Google systems and like what is what. And anyway, um, but yeah, I, I would look at um, maybe the, the stuff I just mentioned if you just got hit recently. Uh, but if you did get hit, don't freak out. Uh, you need to wait. Don't do anything yet. Uh, this is our advice with any time an algo update happens, if you get hit by it. Um, one thing you can do is go into Google Search Console and check and see if you have any manual actions. That's the one thing I definitely would do. And if they actually give you a manual action, then you can try to clean it up, That which is, it's not good, but they actually tell you like what's wrong. And then you can actually start immediately trying to fix it. And then you could submit a reconsideration request. But if you don't have any manual action in Google Search Console, it'd be very easy to tell if you did. There'd be like a little thing telling you had one. Um, then uh, my advice is chill out, don't do anything, wait for the core update to complete rolling out, and then you can come back and ask, or um, you can just keep gathering more information about what's going on with core update. You know, stay active in our Facebook group, stay active on YouTube and Twitter, whatever. And um, then maybe after one to two months, you can slowly start making some changes for what you think is wrong rather than uh, rushing into things right now. Okay. see uh, mike jones says what if your business serves multiple cities yeah then you just need a uh, service uh, or location landing pages uh, just go go mike just go look up and find someone uh, that has an exact same company like you a cleaning company and you'll see um, go find a website and that serves multiple locations and you'll see up on their menu they'll have like locations served and they'll have like separate locations for each page then they'll have like a services page that lists all their services, stuff like that. So just just model your website after that and pay attention to how they're they're linking to everything. Um, but yeah, you know, when in doubt, just just check out your competitors. That's like the number one hack to SEO. Look at look at what's ranking number one. Find someone who's similar a similar business to you that's ranking very well, and you can just um, don't copy them, but you can like structure your site in the same way, or you can approach backlinking in kind of like the same way, approach content in the same way. Uh, you know, Google's really giving you the answer. They're saying this is what we want, and so if you do something similar, then you're gonna have a very good chance of doing well too. All right. Any questions at all, guys, go ahead and drop them in the chat and like, comment, subscribe. Helps me out a lot. It's good for my ego. Uh, do you care more about click through rate or impressions? Um, yeah. So, you know, click through rate and impressions are, are both important, but they're, it's like a completely different thing, right? So impressions is like how many times people are, are seeing your stuff and then click through rate is how many times they're actually clicking it. And if you're, you're, your click through rate can also be pushed uh, down if, for example, you're on like the bottom of page one. So if you're in position like eight or nine, you're going to see a high amount of impressions and your click through rate is going to look really bad because no one's clicking on position eight or nine. They're seeing it, but they're not clicking it. So it can be kind of hard to like gauge these things and figure out what exactly is going on. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, click through rate, you can look at click through rate and it is very important. And, you know, a low click through rate, if you're in a good position and it has a low click through rate, then it can be a sign that you need to try to rework your title, right? Um, basically your, your title was showing on Google. It's not good people. It's not in line with what people want to click, or maybe it's just boring or something. So just make it more clickable. Um, you know, put some numbers or, um, you know, some kind of something kind of flashy or uh, clickbaity in it even. Um, but yeah, you know, both of these things are important. Um, I'll look at both of them. Um, yeah. I feel like it's kind of a shitty answer, but. I guess it's a truthful answer. All right. Um, for the trust signals, do you think it is what Kyle Roof states eat, or is it just backlinks, or is it both? Um, yeah, so that's kind of an interesting question. So, you know, trust signals. How does Google determine if your site is trustworthy? It's a very like, um, it, it's very like vague, right? Like, how does a computer see if you're trustworthy? Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll explain the two sides really quick. So, like, Kyle uh, Roof thinks that, um, at least when we talked to him about a year ago or so about this uh, uh, on our podcast, which is a really cool episode. You should go watch that. Um, 
but yeah, basically he thinks that EAT is how they determine um, your if your site is trustworthy. And this is what Google says. Google says that they used EAT to see if your site is trustworthy. So EAT is uh, expertise, experience, uh, authority, and trust. Um, I know that's probably not really helping you, but basically it's when people talk about EAT, it's usually stuff on your website. So it could be like things like your privacy policy page, contact information, stuff like that. Um, your expertise is like, why should they listen to you? Like what qualifications do you have that you should be listened to on this subject? Uh, experience is like when you're writing your content, you know, basically um, showing that you actually have experience with it rather than just writing some generic shit that anyone could copy and paste from somewhere else on the internet, right? Uh, some kind of unique experience, a firsthand experience. And then um, authority, I'm not sure what Kyle says about that one. Authority would be more like, I don't know if he would say it's like topical authority or what, or maybe he would even say it's like partially backlinks as well. And then trust is the stuff I mentioned about like the like pages on your website, how they can contact you, make sure there's real people behind like the brand, stuff like that. Um, and then the other side of the argument, some people think that eat is completely bullshit and that the only thing that matters is essentially backlinks. Um, and while I do, I feel like it's, I, I'm sorry, I feel like it's a mix. Um, I wish I could say it's just backlinks because, you know, over at SirLinksAlot.co, we are a link building agency. So I'd love to be able to tell you that EAT is 100% backlinks. It'd be very good for my business. Um, but I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, I think it's a, a mix of both for sure. Um, you know, especially now with like the AI stuff, uh, really adding in that uh, experience and expertise into all of your articles, I think is super important. Um, along with like information gain. And so you're just, you're not creating generic content. Um, also, you know, having these like things on your site, like making sure there's real people behind the brand, contact information. I think all this stuff is actually really important um, for trust signals. Um, and then, then backlinks kind of round out the picture, right? Because anybody can say, hey, trust me, look at me, trust me, I'm, this is why you should trust me. But then you have the other side, which is uh, all the other people on the internet who are saying, hey, these guys are a good source of information. You can trust them. Um, so yeah, I think it's both and not just one. And I feel like, you know, you can kind of think about this with a lot of stuff in SEO. There's not a lot of like black and white answers. Things are usually a lot more nuanced and complicated than we like to make them seem, or a lot of people like to make them seem. So um, try to kind of paint this like full round picture instead of just focusing on one thing. Um, I think it was Diggity uh, said, we, we live in the age of SEO where you want to do all the things, right? I believe it's very true. Uh, you know, if you just try to focus on like, just like your keywords and like stuffing your content and writing really good content, you're not going to do well. You need content and backlinks. If you just try to focus on like only your trust signals here, it's not going to really push your rankings. So just do all the stuff, get active on social, do some video, whatever, um, do all the stuff. You're going to be good. Let's see what we got next. And I am running out of question here, guys. So if you guys don't start asking some questions, I might take off a little bit early today. I don't even know what time I started, but. Um, all right, so just write as a content writer, straight and simple. Um, yeah, so basically what this person was asking in our group was, uh, you know, so when I'm writing my content, should I not think about SEO at all? And should I just write it as a, um, just, just imagine I'm trying to write good content. And um, I feel like this is an interesting question too, because, you know, as an SEO, I can't just say, just write good content. I just, I can't do it because I know that there's a certain amount of ranking and SEO that is purely mathematical, right? Um, but I think the problem is, like I was talking on the, on the last question, is people get like hung up on trying to game one thing or to really trying to like manipulate one thing right so like they're really trying to manipulate their content really trying to get the keywords in these exact places and yada 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 and it ends up being content made for seo rather than a content a piece of content made for users and so i feel like a lot of people get themselves in trouble for this because they just completely don't think about the user at all and they end up making a website and content that no one gives a shit about no one wants to read it it's trash it, does, it just doesn't and you end up creating horrible user signals where people bounce off your page they go read something else right or they're not going to convert uh, in the way that you want them to convert um 
So, and, or they, or you just add like nothing original, right? And you just see the, another generic piece of content like everything else. And then maybe Google ends up slapping you for, um, for that, right? Um, so anyway, I feel like a lot of people would be, would do much better off if they actually just tried to focus on the user and just forgot about SEO. Um, but if you are trying to take, you know, if you're, if you're want the best of both worlds, it would be to understand SEO and focus on the user at the same time. Um, but yeah, you know, if you're just starting out, it'd be, I would, I would say, try to understand what search intent is and how you can match search intent with your article and then getting your keyword and your title, your H1 and your URL slug, get your keyword there. And then just try to write good content from there. Like, honestly, like, I feel like most people would be better off if they just tried to do that. Like, it's really that simple, like keyword in those three spots, URL, title, H1, uh, match user intent, search intent, like. So if it's like, um, uh, for example, if you search for like link insertions, uh, the search intent for link insertions is probably gonna be like, what are link insertions? Uh, versus if you have a like product page, which is like buy link insertions, you know, these are two different kinds of search intents. So you wanna match that, get your keywords in those three more, most important spots, then just try to write really good content. And then, you, you know, after you write the good content, you could use a tool like Surfer to kind of make sure you're kind of getting these other like keywords in there or whatever, but you don't even really have to go too crazy about that. And um, I think that's really all you got to do for, for content these days is just try to write something good and unique and that people really want to hear. And that is slightly optimized and got keyword in important spots and you're going to do pretty well. All right, guys, I think this might be the last question I answer unless y'all got anything else to ask. So last warning, any more questions, drop them in the chat or I'm going to take out after this one. Um, helpful content update plus the many other Google algorithm updates, including the March that's still rolling out. Question, has anyone that's using AI not been crushed? Uh, yeah. Uh, I've got an AI site that hasn't been crushed. Uh, granted, I don't really work on it that much, but it's like super low effort, super low quality stuff. And uh, that one's doing completely fine. Actually started doing better. Um, there's a ton of examples of other AI sites that have not been crushed out there. So, you know, like like with everything, you know, when Google rolls out these algorithm updates, they 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 understand what they're trying to do. We understand what they're trying to do, uh, but it's not perfect. Uh, so the question becomes, well, well, how sustainable is like using like AI spam content sites? Like how much longer do we have? Or like how good can Google possibly get? And um, is it safe to me for me to keep using this strategy? Or, um, you know, should I look for something else for, for, for long term? But, you know, if you have a short term approach to making money, then um, maybe it can still work quite well, right? But if you have this like kind of more like longer term approach and maybe you want to sell your business later on or just really grow the business over time into something really big, uh, maybe not something I'd be too comfortable with with doing, right? Uh, but yeah, if you just go look on Google, there's there's tons of AI sites ranking like very well that have not been crushed yet. Um, I would say maybe like the bigger they are, like the more that they've added, like the more AI content they have, like if they're like these huge sites that have done like millions of uh, posts and, um, and have got like quite large with like millions of traffic and stuff. I feel like these had a, a higher chance of like getting on their radar versus uh, sites that are using AI and um, just weren't publishing at like such an insane like volume uh, are still kind of like flying like under the radar, right? But I know there's some some others as well that have published quite significant volume with AI and are still ranking well, but um, yeah, just not a very clean cut answer. and. Definitely still some AI stuff ranking. The fight is definitely not over quite yet. Um, you know, my stance on AI is that I love it. I use it when writing content, but I edit it significantly. I think it's great for uh, getting the ball rolling and kind of getting like the just the junk crap that you that needs to be there anyway. But then you need to go and make it um, uh, better by adding your experience, your expertise, your kind of firsthand uh, views on things, right? And of course, like fact checking it and then um, uh, adding in some, you know, actually like quality, like stats or links to other stuff, um, things like that. And you can really turn like uh, some really generic AI content into like something like really good. Uh, and you're still doing it in less the time, less time than it would take you to do it the old way, which was, you know, 100% uh, human written. Um, but yeah, that's where I am. 
but I know, you know, there's still a lot of people doing these like big AI uh, spam projects and I think it's cool. I respect it and I, I pay attention to it a lot. Um, but it's just not something I can really advise you'd be doing as far as, um, as far as like a best practice or, 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 you know, I don't, I don't want to see people like get their businesses hurt for, um, kind of trying to chase a kind of a, a short-term strategy. Right. Um, but we'll see. It's not over yet. Um, um, Mike, Mike, if you're still here, uh, go ahead and, um, I don't want you to post the website here. Go ahead and, and just email your website real quick to info at sirlinksalot.co. If you do it really quick, I'll edit, I'll audit your website right now. Um, but yeah, send it to info at sirlinksalot.co. Just give me your website URL and a one to two sentences very quick about what you want me to look at. Um, Can an algorithmic penalty be recovered if I turn it into a Shopify site or e-com? And so I'm, I'm not laughing at you because it's a completely valid question, actually. And I'm laughing because there's been a lot of uh, funny talk about this kind of thing on Twitter, where people are basically saying, um, you know, if you have like an ads based website or an affiliate website or ads and affiliate, just like go put a shopping cart uh, icon on your top menu bar and say that you're like selling stuff now. And like, this is gonna, uh, this is gonna fix everything. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I think Google does look at this stuff. So one of the things I've been posting about pretty regularly now for um, maybe the past like um, few months or so, is the idea of um, monetization diversity. So monetization diversity is like how your website is making money. So I think Google, basically, if you are only making money with affiliate links and advertising, I think, I think there might be some kind of filter that Google applies to your site and says, hey, we're going to look at this site more, we're going to look at you like more closely than we would at a website who is making money in other ways. Like maybe they sell some of their own products or maybe they're um, an agency like us at Sir Links a lot where we, we provide all of these other services and, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I think Google sees these kind of things as much more legitimate versus a lot of ads-based websites and affiliate-based websites, which if we're being quite honest, uh, most of the people, if, if they're doing affiliate, like, they, they don't buy the products. They're not real reviews. They're kind of like getting the content from elsewhere, rewriting it. I'm not knocking the game. I know the game, you know, I've got sites like this myself. I'm just saying um, Google clearly has identified what they see as a problem. And I think it's a kind of a smart way of going about it. Um, but I think like you're kind of mentioning here, uh, you know, I think SEOs and, and people in general are quite smart and they'll start kind of like trying to find little ways around it like this. Like, so why, you know, you could, you could even try doing stuff like adding like a little digital course, uh, on your website. Like, you know, you sell like a digital course or, um, some kind of other like info products, like an ebook or something, or some kind of services like consulting or something like this. Right. Um, and so technically you're not just an ads based, uh, site anymore. And if you have enough of this kind of stuff, like all over your website and your menu bars and stuff, then uh, it could be a thing. And, and maybe Google won't be able to deal with that as well. I'm not really sure. Uh, it's, this is like early days on all this shit. Uh, just keep in mind that as far as I can tell, no one, um, has really figured out how to recover from the helpful content update yet which was the update like quite a bit ago. And so if, if you're talking about like the most recent updates as well, um, you know, th there hasn't been nearly enough time and it's getting like harder and harder, I think, to really uh, figure this stuff out, just the way Google's lumping everything together now and updating so many things at one time and so rapidly. Um, so yeah, I think that monetization diversity is a, it's a good thing to look into, especially if you can do it like in a legitimate way. Um, and, and in most cases, you can do it in a legitimate way. You can like create eBooks very easily uh, using ChatGPT, even if you wanted to. I'm not recommending you do that, but I'm just saying some people do. And um, yeah, I think monetization diversity, along with other forms of diversity, like as well, like traffic diversity, where are you getting your traffic from? 
uh, so if you you want to get traffic from not just SEO, so if you can get traffic from from video, if you can get it from uh, social media, if you can get it from ads, you can get it from you know different like forums and shit, like people actually linking to you and with referral traffic, um, you know your email list, whatever. Uh, I think this adds a lot of credibility as well. I think this was actually surfaced in the uh, Yandex leaks. Yandex looked at it was a, an actual ranking factor where they were saying. If they get all their traffic from SEO, it's like a it's like a flag. It's like one thing that they say, "Hey, we're gonna look at you like more harder now, right?" Um, so yeah, monetization diversity, uh, traffic diversity, and if you can get people to actually search for your brand as well, like branded searches, uh, it can be a really good thing as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm not 100% sure. I can't tell you're going to recover if you add a store onto your thing, but I would say it's a good, I would say I, I like the idea and I would be looking into something like that myself if I was running, uh, purely an ads or affiliate based site. Um, yeah, I'd be looking at this stuff, but not just for, from an algorithm or al algorithmic perspective, but it's also good for a money perspective as well. Right. Um, you know, what's, you know, what's better than uh, making a little tiny money off of like ads or uh, selling someone else's product is selling your own product. Um, like, I don't know if you're, if you're just an affiliate, you're just like reviewing other stuff. You're like selling someone else's product all day. They're making way more money than you uh, start selling your own products if you can. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's more difficult, but um, there's more money there. Right. That was a kind of a long rant on that one. All right. Um, Sunny Snipe says, LOL, I talked about that too with my buddy, a fake shop, but I want to save my backlinks. Um, you can save your backlinks. Why don't you just build the shop on the same on the same website? Or if, or if you get hit by the penalty, you could, well, you don't necessarily want a 301. Um, anyway, yeah, you could you could try uh, doing it on the on the same store. Uh, same as I, I meant really revamp the site for real, the domain and links. I like to save it possible. Yeah, you could try it, man. Uh, just, you you know, you're going to have to understand that as, as with these recent updates, no one knows how to recover them yet. And even helpful content, which was like months ago, uh, there's no, no clear way. There's no one that basically there's no consensus on how to recover yet. So you're going to have to kind of play things by ear and just say like, okay, do I want to keep going in this path for how many months? How many months am I going to do this? And it's still not working before I, you know, basically start over or try something else, maybe new domain, 301 redirect, something like that. But um, yeah, just a, a bit of a tricky situation, right? All right. And I'm going to check, uh, I guess we'll end the stream with a site audit here, unless we get any more questions rolling in. Let me try to find your email real quick. Wants to know if this website is SEO friendly. It's kind of a big question. Give me one second, guys. Let me pull up Ahrefs and see what's going on. And let me get a picture on the screen so you can see. I, I want to know if my site is SEO friendly. All right, so I want to know if my site is SEO friendly. Um, yeah, it's kind of a big question, but we'll go ahead and take a look and see what's going on. Um, yeah, so you can see with the href screenshot over here, it's like fresh, fresh. Um, you know, no, no traffic, no referring domains, no backlinks, no nothing. So, you know, nothing for me to audit there. What I will say is what I want you to do is start working on foundational link building. Um, you can do foundational link building yourself. It's something anybody can do. It's just a matter of knowing what the things are, or you can use an agency like us. Either way, uh, it should, it's time versus money, right? Um, but what I mean by foundational link building would be stuff like our diversity links packs, pillow links packs, uh, you can do like social signals, social profiles for you, social profiles and citations are like the biggest ones, these two right here. And also I like press releases a lot. Um, but yeah, these kind of, uh, pillow and diversity packs just have a bunch of stuff like grouped together. Um, so yeah, do some foundational link building. And then if you wanted, you could uh, start doing some like guest posts or link insertion, just go into your homepage. 
as far as backlinks go. But with, with those two for your for your type of business, a local business, um, you could go pretty slowly on these two and just make sure you get the foundational stuff in place. And then this other stuff, you could just go really, really slowly with it. Don't gotta go crazy. Um, yeah, and so then let's go ahead and take a look at the website itself. Home about services contact. Um, all right. Let's see the services here. Where are you located? I don't see any information here about even where you are. Oh, here we go found something about where you are. Um, you do have your phone number at the bottom. You have your brand name. Um, looks like you, no, you don't have your social media channels hooked up yet. Um, I don't have yet, no, no address here either. Um, anyway, I feel like yeah, let's let's look at one of these service pages. Your your buttons are kind of weird to me. I'm just seeing like blue, like little rectangles or whatever. Well, the, the website looks like it's kind of like unfinished. It feels like uh, when I click the button, it doesn't go anywhere. I guess it's like a one page website. I didn't even check. I guess I could check that real quick. Uh, yeah, so it's like a one page website. Uh, yeah, so if I were you, I'd want to actually make this into like a not a one page website. I, I want to flesh it out into, um, um, you know, multiple pages. So instead of you clicking those buttons and they just go further down the page, make them into actual different pages, right? Like, so you have a services page and then on your services page, you can have all the different kinds of services that you have. And then you could link to individual service pages for each of those pages have a separate contact page, a separate about us page, a meet our team page, your homepage, you can just talk about your brand. And yeah, I'm not really seeing anything here uh, for local, like you only have your location even mentioned here one time. So as far, I feel like as far as like, uh, if your site's optimized or not, I, I'd, I feel like I'd have to say no. Uh, even with backlinks, I feel like this site is gonna struggle to rank uh, pretty bad. Um, it's just it's 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 unfinished. It's a good start, but it's not finished. Let me try to uh, any company. Let me try to find a, a business that's similar to yours. Um, and then we can just take a look at their website and kind of go through it. So here's uh, an example of I just pulled up uh, a cleaning company in Austin, Texas. Never seen this website before. Um, but yeah, you can see up here, you know. Right here. So see when I click this services thing? Okay, so it doesn't actually take me to a page. But then when I click on each of these in the little drop down, each of their different services has its own page. And see how right here at the top, housekeeping services in Austin, Texas. They're really optimizing. This is their H1 right here. And you can see up in their URL right here, recurring uh, housekeeping maid services, Austin, Texas. Again, they're having their keywords and their location up here. And then up here as well, you can see their title tag, housekeeping services in Austin, Texas. So they're really optimizing for like the keyword for the service, the location over and over and over again. Um, and then, you know, I got a nice little page here with some nice buttons. The buttons can actually go places and, and work. They're working. Uh, down at the bottom, they got a little call to action here. They got phone number here. Um, da, 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 what is this? Okay. And then see down here at the bottom, this nice little map embed. These map embeds are really good for local. And then again, uh, they got their, uh, their keyword. They have their phone number. They got their address. They got their hours. And down here at the bottom again, phone number, email, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so yeah, you just want to flesh your site out a little bit more with all this kind of stuff. Um, I think I just hit like most of the really important stuff there. Um, we can go and look at their team page really quick for you. You know, there's got some people putting some faces behind the team, behind the company, making it look like a real thing. Um, it's got a contact us page. You know, it's, this only takes like a couple seconds to make a page like this. Uh, another big map embed there. Um, yeah. If you want, I'll go ahead and just post this website in the chat for you because I feel like this is a very, um, you know, it's very similar to to your site, um, and you could just kind of model uh, what you're doing um, after this website, and um, you'd be on a very good path.
All right, let's see what's going on. Looks like we got some more questions rolling in. Mike, yeah, a brand new business. Yep, no problem, man. It's, you know, it is what it is. Everyone's got to start somewhere, right? Uh, square one is an exciting place to be. You know, it's a, maybe a little stressful or whatever, and it seems like overwhelming, you got all this shit to worry about. But, you know, honestly, starting over, starting starting stuff, like it's a new project. Uh, I get really I get really pumped up about that kind of shit, man. Uh, but yeah, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also join our Facebook group, SEO Roundtable. I'm going to link for you really quick for that. I don't know if you're in there. Um, but yeah, our Facebook group is where we're actually the most active. Um, we're in there every day, like uh, posting tips and uh, people are asking questions or whatever. And you can get answers from uh, me and my partner as well as um, just other people in the group. Um, yeah, definitely a good place to be. Um, and yeah, so if you have any more questions and you're gonna have a ton more questions, you can just post them in the group or you can ask on live streams, but the live streams are kind of like random, right? That are, you know, I'm in Malaysia right now. Nick is in the United States and I think he's flying to Barcelona. We're in these weird spots and it's hard to coordinate and have like the streams at a normal time all the time. We're going to be in Vietnam soon. So, yeah. Um, man, I always envy new sites after the core update. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess they're not losing anything, right? They haven't lost anything yet, at least. So, Sonia Snipe says it's one of the better Facebook groups I've joined. Glad you're enjoying it, man. I'm actually a little, um, you know, the Facebook group keeps growing and growing and growing, but I can see like our post reach and stuff. And I feel like the post reach does not correspond with how the group is growing. So I'm a little bit worried or not worried about the group, but I'm a little bit like, I'm not sure if the group is like a good use of time i meant we're not going to stop doing it we're going to keep doing it i just feel like it's i feel like they might have like i feel like facebook has like limited the amount of reach you can get in groups i could be wrong on that um but yeah it just feels like it's not growing like the posts aren't getting like more impressions with like the more people that are joining anyway maybe i just suck at making facebook posts or group posts or whatever so maybe i need to do a better job but a little bit worried that the groups maybe are not like the best thing in the world but not going to stop it anytime soon. So definitely join us over there. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take off. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, what's going on next week? Okay, so yeah, on Monday, I'm flying to Vietnam. I think we'll try to do a stream uh, next Wednesday. I'll try to do a stream next Wednesday for you guys. Um, should be set up and should be no problems. Hopefully their internet is not bad this time the last time i went there <laughs> the last time i went there uh they said that sharks chewed through the internet cables let me get a new story because i'm not even making this up sharks chew through vietnam internet cables um yeah anyway i'm, I'm not going to spend too much time trying to find it for you but uh yeah, in Vietnam, sharks have a taste for internet cables, which contain our data biting into cables. Basically, they had like, um, yeah, here's another news stories here, but they had like like three or four main internet cables, like giving internet to their entire country, and they said that sharks chewed through them, and so the internet was like really bad the last time I was there, and like really spotty, and it was really hard to do live streams and stuff. So hopefully, uh, they've like killed the sharks or something, or um, or not killed them, but made thicker cables. I don't know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Uh, what do we got? I got uh, PBN links on sale this month uh, for only a few more days. Uh, code PB11 if you're interested in some PBN links. We actually just revamped our whole network recently as well. So it's completely, it's way better than the way we were doing it before. It's way more natural, way more uh, niche down sites as well. Uh, what else we got going on? Can't really think of anything right now. I'm, I'm pretty tired. It's like uh, 11 p.m. over here. I'm just going to get going. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully that helped, and I'll see you guys next time.